path. This video is part of our Give Your Group a Checkup series where we have been revisiting some fundamental group settings to ensure that they are working well for your project. In this video, I'd like to walk you through how to manage your join policy, community tools, and some other group settings. And we'll also talk about some important information that is good to display on your overview page and show you how to see what your site looks like from the point of view of someone who is uh, not a member of your group. Um, for, for all of this, uh, Dr. Carlos Scholar and Dr. Sabrina Robertson have given me permission to show you all of this using their project site, which is uh, high throughput discovery science and inquiry based case studies for today's students, um, also called HITS. So let's take a look here. So in order to access your group settings, you go to manager and then settings. And you'll see places where you can put in a title and a project description um, down here, a logo. Down here is what I really want to start talking about, which is your membership settings or your join policy. So there's uh, four different options. The most open join policy is this one, just open or anyone, which means that anyone can uh, join your group. Um, when they arrive at your site, they'll see a join group button in the upper right, and they can just go ahead and do that and immediately get access to um, group member materials. And, and this works for a lot of projects. Um, if you want a little more restricted join policy, you can choose this one here, uh, which just means that um, people can submit a membership request to join your group, and that request has to be approved or denied by a manager. So in that case, there's a little bit of lag time between the time they request a membership and actually get access to the group. Um, but you get a little bit more control over that. Uh, right now, the, the restricted join policy is working well for the HITS group site. Um, they're really focused on getting their advisory committee logged in, um, join, joining their group, um, and they're still building the content on their group site pages. And so I think their plans are to open it up a little bit later uh, sort of when, when it makes sense for them to do that. Um, so the restricted join policy might work for some groups. The invite only option means that people cannot request a membership, but you can send them an invite. And the closed um, join policy means that memberships cannot be requested. So uh, one of these might work well. Um, if you are a leadership team using your group to collaborate and you want to keep it uh, quite private, you might choose one of these join policies. If you scroll down a little bit here, we have some options regarding discoverability. Um, you can set your group to be visible or hidden. That just determines whether or not your group can be seen in searches. So you can get to this groups page. Uh, you can get to it from the Cube's homepage. Um, and this is where you can search for groups by title or browse all available groups. If you choose visible, your group will show up here, um, which is what we highly recommend, um, allowing people to be able to, to find your group, learn about it, and get involved is, is really what most groups want. Um, so we highly recommend that. If we scroll down a little bit, we have some, we can choose some permission settings for our overview page and the community tools. So for each of these, you have a few different options. So for example, your overview page, you can set to be visible to any hub visitor, which means anyone dropping by can view your overview page, is, which is what most people would want. Um, you can set it to um, only be available to registered hub users, which means they would need an account in order to 
to view um, this particular um, item or group members only. So they have to be a member of your group and logged in in order to uh, be able to see the overview page or use one of these particular tools. So we highly recommend that you're, you set your overview page um, available to any Hub visitor. Your overview page is where you'll put some general information about your project, and you'd really want that to be uh, widely available so that, so that people can find you and you can connect with like-minded faculty. The um, members tool is where um, people can see who are members of the group. We recommend that you make this visible to any hub visitor. Even if you choose to have a more restricted join policy, it's nice to um, show others who are in the group and um, they can contact one of the group members if they'd like to learn more. Um, so it's nice to show other people who are, who are in the group. Let's see, for, so from there on, you'll want to think about which tools you'll be using right away, um, which ones you won't be using at all, and which ones you might be using at a later date. We, in general, we'd recommend um, turning off any tools that you're not gonna be using right away. You can always turn them back on later. And it's nice to have uh, just a sm small subset of tools available that are being used so that um, visitors aren't overwhelmed with all these tools that aren't really even being used uh, when they drop by your site. So um, I know that the HITS group is going to be using announcements um, pretty soon. And uh, that's one way that they'll be communicating with their group members. And they're going to be using the forum uh, to host discussions amongst group members. And they're going to be using collections to share resources. And, um, and they even have plans to use the projects tool to collaborate with um, members of their community. So I'm going to leave all of those set to group members only. Um, so that, um, oh, so only group members will have access to that. If it works for your project, it is really nice to um, have some of those tools that you're using available to any hub visitor. So for example, if they can see your announcements or if they can see the discussions happening in the forum, that might be enough to entice them to join the group, which in, at the end of the day is what you'd really like. So, um, but anyway, for now, I'll leave these as, as they are. Let's see, it's also nice to keep your activity open to any hub visitor, so I'm gonna change that. Um, this is nice, because it, it, it shows a list of activity within your group, um, so when somebody posts in the forum or updates a page, uh, that gets shown in the activity, which again, might be enough information to get pique somebody's interest and draw them into your group. I know that um, HITS has plans to use the blog tool um, sometime this summer, but for right now, we're gonna turn this and some other tools off, again, to just reduce the amount of clutter that will be in the sidebar um, and make it easier for people to navigate. So see, I'm gonna disable the blog and the calendar and courses and resources. Some of these other tools here.
Okay, so now we have uh, selected, actually, I think I'm gonna make this available to group members only. Okay, so we've selected our uh, settings for our tools. And if you scroll down, you'll see this auto subscribe um, to new, I'm sorry, auto subscribe new group users to discussion email. Um, and it's really good to make sure that that option is check, checked because it allows um, new group, group members to receive notifications uh, about your group. So for example, when somebody posts in the forum, they'll get notified about that. There's a little note here that says users can modify their individual settings. And so there's some options for getting um, a daily or a weekly digest. So if people are feeling like they're getting too many emails, which really can happen in a very active group, they can um, get daily or weekly emails that collate all of those announcements and posts into uh, one email. And then down below here, there is options for including comments at the bottom of the page. We, in general, we'd recommend uh, choosing no for this. This allows, um, again, comments to happen at the bottom of the page, but really that can make for like a very cluttered page. So we'd really recommend having discussions occur in the group forum. And you can even link to those discussions on a page. And so they can still view information on a page and then join to the discussion, but it won't um, look as cluttered and you have a nicer way of, of organizing the conversations using the group forum. And then there's the option to include author details at the bottom of the page. Um, I would say most people generally don't turn that on. So we'll leave that as a no. And now that we've selected our settings, we can click um, save group and those will be updated. Um, you can see that now there are fewer, oh, I'm getting a notification that I've updated the group. And you could see that there are fewer uh, tools in the sidebar, which will be help it make it to be easier for people to navigate. Okay, so we've, we've made those changes. And um, I wanted to show you how you can <clears throat> also manage the privacy settings for individual pages. So we have set our overview page available to any hub visitor, but let's just say that there are some pages that you want um, to maybe only have group members be able to access the material on that page. So the way that you would do that is to go to manager and then pages and you can select an individual page. So you can see all the pages here that you can click uh, to edit. Let's just say that you have some workshop material that you want to be only available to group members. So I'll click on the workshop page and the privacy setting is over on the right here. You can see that currently it's set to um, any hub visitor can access this page, which is the same as the overview page. If you wanted to change that, uh, this is where that you would do that. You can select it to be a private page accessible to group members only. Um, I'm not gonna do that because that's not the purpose of their particular page here. Um, but if you were to change it, you would change it, and then uh, don't forget to hit save page. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the group. Okay, so we've uh, selected our group settings and we've um, managed the privacy of individual pages. I'd like to talk a little bit about some information that's useful to display on the overview page. And so the HITS overview page is really great. It contains a lot of really useful information. They have their beautiful logo and they have um, some information, uh, some general information about their project. And they have a list of 
of the individuals involved, in this case, the, the HIT steering committee. And what's really nice is that they have, um, for the people listed, they have a link to their uh, CUBE's profile, which is a great way to um, help people connect to you, help people connect to other members of your project. And so um, here's where you can put some information about who you are and how to contact you. And so that's, that's a great way to connect people. Um, but they also wanted to include some additional information on their overview page. So they already have this really great Get Involved page, which um, talks about ways that you can get involved with your group. For them, um, they have information about becoming a HITS case fellow, and they have information about becoming a HITS HT re researcher but they really wanted to highlight this information right on their overview page to help people get involved right away. Um, and right now they're accepting applications to become a HITS HT researcher. So they really want to advertise that on their overview page to help get people applying to that. And so I really like that idea in general. It's a really great idea to highlight some of your important and timely information on your overview page. They also, um, you may remember, they have a restricted join policy, which means you have to submit a membership request to join the group, but they really wanted to encourage people to do that. They want people to get involved and join the group. And so they also wanted to include some text um, on their overview page, telling people how to join and, and encouraging them to do so. Um, so to make these changes, uh, we'll go to manager and then pages again. And this time, since we're going to edit the overview page, I'll select that. And so here they've, they've made it easy on me because they have prepared um, the changes ahead of time. So I'm just going to go and grab the source code that they've already prepared. And I'm going to plug it in right here. And hopefully that should look a little bit different. Yep, so we've included some new things here. It's kind of hard to view it this way, so I'm going to hit Save Page. And then we'll go back to our group and hopefully see our changes. So we scroll down a little bit. Here we have some um, information about joining the group and encouraging people to do so. We have um, some things that they can click on for ways to get involved. And they we have so it, uh, sort of an advertisement for um, letting people know that that applications are open to become a HITS HT researcher. So great, we see those changes. Um, it's otherwise the same. But uh, right now we're viewing this page as a manager. And so it's really nice when you're making edits to your group site pages to just sort of double check to see what it would look like as an outsider. So somebody that's not yet in your group, make sure that you know, the things that you expect to be visible are visible. Anything that you expect to um, be accessible to only group members is really only accessible to them. And so the way I do that is pretty simple. So I'm gonna copy the um, web address and just go to another browser. So currently I'm in Chrome. So I'm gonna go to Internet Explorer and type in that address. Type it up here. And so I'm not logged in with this browser. Uh, you, you can see that it's asking me to log in and it's asking me that my option is to request a membership to the group. And so um, let's, let's take a look. Let's see what we see. So we can see the, um, the subset of, of, of community tools in the sidebar. Uh, that we expect to see. And I see this little lock symbol showing that um, 
that these tools are only accessible to, to group members, except for I could see the, the members, if I were to click on that and I could see the activity. Um, so I can find that. And then if I scroll down, I can see all of the changes that we made to the overview page. Um, and it's, it's exactly as we predicted. So that's a good thing. So I'm gonna go back to my other browser and actually, that is it. That's all I, I wanted to cover. I hope you learned how to manage your group settings um, and privacy settings for individual pages. I hope you got some ideas for your overview page um, and learn how to view your project from the perspective of someone who is not a member of your group. Thank you.